are. It's episode four of the seventh series of The Great British Sewing Bee. Um, episode four, four people gone, a third of the field is cleared, and now the workroom is a bit smaller, and as a result, the candidates are going to be a bit more exposed. There's going to be more time to devote to each candidate and, and show what their day is like in the workroom. And in episode four, I noticed a couple of things. The first one was that there was a bit of a ringer thrown in. They wanted a Breton top finished with a curious piece of binding. It's, it's a bit off the wall, uh, but I think that was done on purpose because they wanted to see who could handle something really tricky. And a couple of them made it work, but most of the people failed at that hurdle. And I think that was intentional. So it made the program really interesting. Oddly enough, the person I thought that handled that the best ended up in second place. That's not the first time that happened. So anyway, uh, that's the first thing I want to talk about, is how to finish a neck edge cleanly with a facing or a binding, which is going to be a lot easier than what they were given as directions. And the second thing was, of course, out of the Breton top, was um, matching of stripes. So it's going to be those two things, I'm talking about how to finish a neck edge cleanly and that tricky um, technique of how to manage stripes and match them. I'm going to show you two different options for finishing a neckline with a facing. For the first option, I've reinforced the curved section by applying a strip of fusible stabilizer to the wrong side of the fabric. To face the neckline and finish the raw edge, I've cut a bias strip from cotton poplin cloth. The bias strip is an inch and a quarter wide. To prepare the strip, a chalk line is drawn in the exact middle or at five eighths of an inch along. Then each side of the strip is pressed to the middle chalk mark creating our bias binding strip. Next, open out one of the folds and place the raw edge of the binding even with the raw edge of your neckline. Stitch in the fold of the binding along the neck edge, making sure that the raw edges are matched and gently ease in the garment fabric. Do this carefully so that you don't create any little folds or tucks along the way. The aim here is not to stretch the garment fabric outside its original shape. With practice, you'll learn how to control the stretch of the different grains in the main fabric and in the bias strip. Now notice how you can turn the bias binding along the curved section and see the little waves that will appear. You need to ease these in gently as well. As you come to the end of sewing your neckline, trim your threads away and give the binding a light hand press up and away from the garment. Now turn the binding to the inside of the garment and roll it back so that just a sliver of the garment fabric shows through. Now we're going to stitch the binding in place. Turn the binding to the inside of the garment, rolling it back so that you can see just that sliver of garment fabric and stitch close to the edge of the binding. Keep checking the garment fabric to your left for any ripples or tucks. Smaller ripples will usually press out. And again, with practice, you'll learn how to control this for a smooth line. So keep to the edge of that bias binding Try to get it about a sixteenth of an inch away 
and continue to check all along the way. Here you're sewing on the straight, so you're not going to get as many ripples. But as you turn the corner, you have to be a little more careful. And there's more to smooth away now as we come to this last curve. If you see any ripples along the way, smaller ones, don't panic because these are all going to press out. Now you've come to the edge of your neckline here. A smooth hand press shows you how these smaller ripples will just fade away. And now we're ready to press. With your steam iron, apply the steam lightly and keep your iron moving with upward scallop motions. And repeat this until all the ripples are smoothed out. And you can see the difference of that small line of ripples all along the neck edge that are now completely smoothed out. In this second option of finishes, we won't be applying any reinforcement to the wrong side of the cloth. But without this support, the cloth will stretch naturally and this needs to be controlled or eased in gently when you're applying your binding. For this finish, I'm using the same inch and a quarter bias strip from a cotton poplin weave, but this time the strip is narrower because it's pressed exactly in half. Now you line up the three raw edges. The fold of this strip is to your left and the seam is sewn at a quarter of an inch around the neckline. Now you'll notice that this strip is narrower than in the first example. This smaller strip is easier to control, and in general, the smaller the binding or the smaller the facing, the easier it is to maneuver into a smooth thing. Now we're coming right around this last curve, and you can see to the left the fabric that needs to be eased in. Now here I give the binding a hand press upward away from the garment and prepare to understitch. You might remember from one of my earlier videos, the understitch anchors all layers of the seam together so that the facing stays cleanly on the inside of the garment and won't roll to the outside. Check that all three layers of the fabric are underneath the facing and stitch them together close to the seam and try to maintain that 16th inch or less. And the hand press you did earlier does help set this up for you, but you can also steam press it into place before you understitch. So just keep checking that all the layers are together under the facing. And keep smoothing the left side of the garment out of the way and along the way as you finish this understitch. And now we're going to check the underside to make sure that we've caught in all three of those layers of that seam and they're all anchored neatly. And now you roll the facing to the inside as before so that a very small amount of the garment fabric shows through. And just like the first example, the facing is now stitched into place from the wrong side. Stitch close to the edge of the facing and continuously check the garment fabric so that it's lying flat and there are no puckers or creases along the way. And here again you can see it's much easier when we have a straight section than it is when we're trying to deal with a curved section. And once again as we enter into this curved section you can see that there's more fabric now to the left that needs to be, there we go, just eased in right there underneath our facing. 
And now we can check both sides of this finished edge and we're ready to give this a light press. And then once again, after we've checked both sides with your iron, use a light steam, keep the iron moving, small upward motions away from the garment fabric. And you can see with a smaller facing, this has been a bit easier of a task. You can, don't forget your clapper if you want that extra crisp finish. And there we have our second option for attaching a facing to a curved neckline. And this is the smaller one of the two. In previous episodes, we discussed matching patterns, you know, florals and checks and more complicated patterns. But in this episode four, we looked at the Breton top and the stripes were quite exposed. So we're going to look at that and I've put together just a set of things that might be helpful to meet the challenges of matching those stripes in particular. Managing stripes can be really tricky and time consuming to set up. So I want to share with you my five tips to help make things more manageable when you're matching stripes. Tip number one is practice. Get some scraps of striped fabric and try to find different weaves like woven cottons and jersey knits. Find some wider stripes. Find some narrower stripes. Find some even and uneven stripes. Cut each fabric into small squares of about five to six inches. Then match the stripes right sides together and do this just by eye. Don't use any pins, no tapes or any markings. Just use your eyes. Go slowly and get the feel of your machine as it passes over each stripe. And when you finish the square, open up the two layers along the seam and see how you've done. Try the same pattern again and see how you might improve, making any adjustments just by eye. Now that's tip number one, practice. Now here's the other four. I'm using small squares of thin jersey knit, and you can see here how just how unstable the cut edges are with a tendency to roll in quite a bit. So I've pinned them back. Now to match these stripes in a seam. I'm using a half inch seam allowance and I'm marking through each of the dark stripes with a sharp white chalk on the wrong side of the cloth. I've already marked the right side of the cloth in the piece underneath. Now, put a pin through the chalk mark at the edge of each stripe and pass the pin through to the other side of the fabric underneath at the same place, top of the stripe. Pin the two intersections together and repeat this at every stripe or every two or three, whatever you're comfortable with. Now sew the seam along the chalk mark and see how you've done. Tip three is to hand baste the main seams of your garment ahead of time. Use your needle in the same way as you used your pins in tip number two, by matching both layers of fabric through the chalk mark and just putting in a small hand stitch. And do this at whatever frequency is comfortable for you. Now I like to do this so that I can get a good look at the fit of a garment before I do any machine sewing to see how it's gonna look on the mannequin or how it's gonna look on the wearer. This way, if I need to recut anything, I'll know ahead of time and I'll save myself a lot of unpicking. Tip number four is used on woven cloths and is set up by eye. Because the presser foot moves the top layer of fabric over the bottom layer, there is a slight shift that occurs unless you ease in the top layer. 
Once you get used to the way your fabric behaves, you can set the pattern on the top layer slightly ahead of that second layer underneath. So when the seam is sewn, that slight shift in the top layer will line up the patterns to match naturally. Tip number five is to use a walking foot. This foot mimics the action of lifting the needle to move the fabric along so that the foot steps over the layers of fabric instead of sliding over them when the top layer can sometimes stretch over the bottom layer. The walking foot prevents this displacement and helps to sew all layers together evenly. I hope you found these things helpful, you know, how to finish a neck edge and, and how to gain a little bit of advantage when you want to cut down on time when you're matching stripes. And now we look forward to the halfway point to the Great British Sewing Bee, episode five. And I'm going to be really interested in this because it's about children's wear. And I like this particular genre of, of you know, design because it's not about miniaturizing the adult patterns that we're all used to working with. This is a whole different set of proportions altogether. So you have to start with a new set of measurements. It's not about grading it's, or anything like that. It's about starting from a whole new point. Uh, and that's a much smaller figure with different proportions. So really interested.